In this film, we're going to be looking at soldering and specifically at soldering small little jump rings and bales onto much larger and bigger objects. My name is Andrew Berry and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. I've noticed in some of the Facebook jewelry groups, there have been a few questions asked, um, asking for help, basically, um, finding it difficult to solder small little jump rings onto large bezels and large objects. Um, the jump ring melts all the time. And this is something that I have just been doing now over the past few weeks. This is a little corrugated bead that we've been producing on At The Bench. Atthebench.com is our online jewelry training website. Go and check it out link it by here um, and on this we've got quite a large area and we've been soldering on these little jump rings top and bottom the same sort of idea it's a small little jump ring onto a large mass and in this little quick film we're going to be looking at soldering onto this little ball um, I've just found this in my scrap I have no idea what it's doing there and I've got a very small little bale um, here that we have made up uh, in the past, again, um, I think I showed you quick ways on how to make bales. Again, I'll link it up by here if you're going to have a look at the end of this particular film. And I got a couple of little small, very, very, very small little silver jump rings as well. And we're going to be soldering them onto the um, like a ball almost, stood in silver. And this is not in basically making anything in particular. This is just purely just to show you how we can do this without melting the bale and without melting the jump rings. Um, I'm using some flux. I'm using some borax. You can use whatever flux. It really, really doesn't matter. And the solder we're going to be using is a little bit of, uh, in this case, hard solder. Um, you don't need an awful lot of solder when it comes to soldering jump rings or soldering bales. So let's just pop a couple of small little pieces onto my block here. Now, the trick is when it comes to um, soldering little jump rings upon to large, large pieces of, of, like, of silver like this, they have two completely different sizes. They're two different complete masses. If you put a flame on the jump ring and a flame on the ball at the same time, the same powered flame, uh, the jump ring will melt because the jump ring has a small mass, it heats up quickly, and so it will melt way before the larger object even got up to temperature to melt. And so you have to figure this out. You have to think, well, okay, okay. well, if I put the flame on the jump ring, it's gonna melt before the actual solder has had chance to melt, even before the actual ball that we've got here is ready to melt. So let's not put the flame on the jump ring. That makes complete sense. Let's direct the flame onto the mass, the bigger piece of metal that we've got here, wait for that to heat up to the right temperature and then bring the flame across towards the jump ring. Or in this case, we won't even move the flame towards the jump ring because what we will be doing is using the heat that is generated from the little ball, the mass that we've got here, the heat generator will transfer over onto the jump ring and so it will melt the solder. And don't forget, it's not necessarily the flame that melts the solder, it's the metal. If the metal is the correct temperature, the solder will melt to the metal. If the metal is not up to temperature, but the solder is, the solder will melt. The solder will be guaranteed melt. Why? It's a very, very small little mass. It will melt very, very quickly. And this is the problem. People say, well, my solder's melt melting, but I haven't got a decent solder joint. The, the solder's not flowing. Well, the reason why it's not flowing is because the metal is not hot enough. The metal has to be the same temperature as the melting point of the solder, or slightly higher, for that solder to flow and make the molecular bonds to the metals in question. All right, enough talking. I'm gonna bring that camera in here nice and close so you can see exactly what we're going to be doing. As I said, we've got some 
borax. We're going to be soldering on the little bale first of all and this is a continuation basically of um, so what somebody asked on the film that I did on making bales can you show us how to solder a bale on this is like a year or so later so I apologize for the delay but you'll be able to see how I now solder the bale into place so this little ball that we've got here that we're going to be using has a very very small hole in it so I know it is not going to explode. You have a, a hollow ball with no hole in it, you heat it up the air, it expands inside, it explodes in your face. Not a good idea. So always wear safety glasses and always make sure there is a small hole in the object that you're heating up to allow the air to escape you to solder successfully. Okay, let's get this sorted out. Let's bring that camera nice and close and let's get cracking. I'm going to be swapping out my soldering block for a little charcoal one because we've got a little bit of a dip there and we can put that into place just like that. First things first, make sure that your soldering surface is lovely and clean. A little bit of emery paper over that. Make sure it's lovely and clean. Put that into place. Make sure that the bale also is nice and clean on the bottom. Again, we're going to pass emery paper over that. Right, we can hold this little guy in place while we come to solder it like this if you wanted to. Just like that, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to use a third hand and hold the bale in the third hand like this. Now, let's get some flux on the top of the ball here and also on the bottom of our bale. By having it in the third hand like this, we can be sure that we can get the bale exactly right, exactly where we want it. We can get it vertical. We can move the third hand all over the place and to make sure that actually goes exactly where we want to. We've got a little bit of solder. That was on our old block. Let's bring that bit of solder back into place. Let's put that directly on the top of there. Now, what I'm going to do is put the bale on top. So I want to have the bale rest in right on top of where I want the bale to be soldered. But not just touching, it needs to have a little bit of pressure pushing down because the idea is when that solder melts, I want the bale then to drop down to touch the ball for the solder to flow all the way around. So there's a bit of pressure on that bale pushing down from the third hand. So when the bale melts, the bale, when the solder melts, the bale will drop. All right, let's start and get our torch and let's get this soldered. Using a little torch. So the flame, where is the flame going? Well, I'll tell you what, the flame is not going up here onto the bale. Even though we've got a third hand here, it's gonna suck some of the heat away. We're gonna warm up that third hand with the flame just to avoid it sucking all the heat away when we come to solder. Like that, then we can bring the flame down. Now we can put the flame, we're aiming the flame towards the ball. We're not putting the flame onto the bale or any more thing like that because the bale will melt. We're bringing the flame onto the ball and you can see what's happening. You can see the color of the flux. The flame is on the ball, not on the bale. The flame is down here all the time. We're gonna move that flame up a little bit. Look at the solder, there we go. That's cool. So did you see what happened there? The the solder melted, the bale dropped because I wanted that to go over the hole itself. But that now is looking absolutely brilliant. Soldered very neatly into place. There is actually a very small hole still right underneath that bale there, which is fine because we're gonna be soldering a little jumping onto the other side of that. So that is the idea. The flame does not necessarily touch the Bale, the flame just purely touched the ball and the flame it was heating the ball up and the transference of the heat from the ball was going on to the bale. And also the flame was quite near, so obviously there was a bit of heat from the flame going towards the bale. But no time did that flame go on the bale, it was purely the transference of heat from the ball through to the bale. Okay, let's wait for that to cool a second. Then we're gonna carry on with soldering the jump ring onto the bottom of the ball there. So with that cooled down, it's looking disgusting because it needs to go into the acid. But what we're going to do next is solder a little ball onto the opposite side down there. So for that, we're going to get our soldering block back here. We're gonna get our third hand and we're gonna put this 
bail in the third hand to hold it. Now, as you can see on the end here, we've got a lot of fire scale that we don't need. So let's just emery paper that off. Always important to make sure that there is no oxides or anything where we're going to be soldering, just like that there. So let's get the jump ring and let's, it's very, very thin, it's about 0.8 millimeters in thickness. So what we're going to do is just to put that jump ring together like that and we're going to put that into our pliers and where the joint is just by here we're going to file just a little flat so we've gone down around about halfway through and that now has made a little bit of a flat on the jump ring which has increased the surface area when we come to solder it onto the ball now again we're not going to put um, the flame on the jump ring. Let's just put a little bit of solder onto the jump ring first of all. Same sort of principle as the bale just a moment ago. A little bit of flux onto the jump ring there and a small amount of solder as well. And we're going to be doing some sweat soldering. We're going to be melting that solder onto our jump ring. So we don't have to worry about messing around, trying to get the solder in the right place. We can melt that bit of solder, tease it towards the jump ring. We're going to cut the flame. The flame, you can see, is over here. It's not directly on the jump ring. So let's bring the flame down towards the jump ring. A little bit, a little bit. There we go, until the solder just melts just like that. Okay, so good control. Have the flame over away from the jump ring. Don't bring the flame in front of it like by here because the flame is constantly heating the jump ring. Put the flame over the top and bring the flame slowly towards the jump ring and it will melt when it's the right temperature. All right then. Now this is where it's going to be a little bit more tricky because we've got the third hand being used now to support the ball. So we're going to use our hands just to hold onto, or our tweezers, just to hold that jump ring in place on top. Again, more flux on the end here. Now there is a hole, don't forget, near to that bale, so this is not going to explode on me. Get the torch, and again, we're gonna be heating up the ball. We've got our jump ring. We're not gonna be putting any flame onto this jump ring at all, although we are gonna put a little bit of flux on it. So we're gonna be holding the jump ring up here, up out of the way, heating the ball. Look at the color of the flux. The flux is a fantastic indication of just when that solder is going to melt. Just as that flux is gone, a nice brown, starting to go gray, browny, we're gonna bring the jump ring down so the jump ring touches the ball. And as the jump ring touches the ball, the heat from the ball will be transferred through to the jump ring and that solder then will melt. Keep the flame away from your fingers as well. So there's the solder, sorry, there's the flux. Look at the color of the flux. Okay, so here's the jumping. Jumping's up here at the way. Okay, you can see the color of the flux. I am now gonna be feathering on that flame, on, off, on, off. We're gonna bring the jumping towards the area. The flame is on the ball. The little bit of the, the outside of the flame is just coming to the jumping, soldered hold it, take that off. By doing it that way, you have only got the very smallest, tiniest amount of solder just down here on this fillet exactly where you need it. If you'd put a pallet, a little pallion of solder, where you think you're going to solder it and the solder melts, the solder is going to have a large, large area where it is melted. Then you bring the jump ring on top and you've got a big, big area of solder around here. But by doing it this way, the solder loves two surfaces. The solder will always stay between two surfaces. So here's the ball, here's the jump ring. That contact point, the solder will always stay. It won't spread anywhere else because it's attracted to the joint with those two surfaces touching. Here's the ball, here's the jump ring. That contact point, the solder will stay between. It won't go flowing anywhere else because it wants to stay between those two surfaces. So the solder will have the smallest amount of 
um, the salt will have the smallest amount. The, yeah, the salt will have the smallest amount of spread because it loves those surfaces. So don't go put in, if you're doing especially very small jump rings, put the solder onto the jump ring first. You can limit the amount of solder that you use. Once that solder has melted on the jump ring, you then can transfer that onto the larger object. And don't worry about people saying, well, once you've melted the solder, it won't melt again because you've altered the properties because it's melted once, it won't melt again and so forth. You're only melting it for a fraction of a second onto that jump ring. Then you transfer then that solder from the jump ring onto the large part. And as you saw, the flame does not go on directly onto that jump ring. The flame stays on the larger part to heat it up and then you bring the jump ring down into place. The flame may go up slightly and you're just using the outer edge of the cone, the very, very outer edge to warm up that jump ring. But at no stage do you ever put the flame directly onto the jump ring. It will melt. And at no stage do you actually put that flame directly onto the solder either because that will melt quickly before the rest of the job will really get up to temperature. This is just a sample. Um, yeah, unusual, isn't it? So that's how we solder a bale. And yes, I could have done the same technique with the bale. Just put the solder on the bale and then did the same technique as I did with the jump ring and brought the bale down instead of sandwiching the solder between the ball and the bale. Exactly the same technique, but two different ways of showing you how we can solder a bale or a jump ring that's a very, very small compared to the item we're soldering it onto. Hope that makes sense. Thank you. Um, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and smash that little bell icon if that is something that you're into to be notified when films go live on our YouTube channel. Don't forget, please, I'd love you to give this films a thumbs up if you like it. Soldering, it's, uh, it's, 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 people think it's magical, but there's no magic to it. It's the principles of cleanliness of joints and understanding how the piece heats up with the flame and how the solder loves to flow. Nothing magical, just practice, practice, practice. Thumbs up if you like it, tell your friends, share it with your friends, I'd love you to. And in the meantime, my name's Andrew Berry for At The Benches YouTube channel. Take care, I will see you next time. Ta-da. In this film, we're gonna be looking at soldering. Soldering. <laughs> Sounded very Welsh then, didn't I? Soldering in in this film, we're going to be looking at soldering again. And I've noticed there's no, I could take the next one, couldn't I? Joint, it stays at the... The jump ring. He says he drops it in his tray. <laughs> Why is it you... <laughs> Why is it you pick it up and you go, hmm, is that hot? Oh, that is hot. And then you drop it and then you go, oh, I better pick that up. And you pick it up and you go, damn me, it's hot. <sighs> Don't forget, if you haven't done so already, please click that thumb bell and smash that. Thumb bell? <laughs> <laughs>